What's going on everybody? Evan here with Evan's Detailing and Polishing. Uh, when a lot of people call in with sanding questions, I almost always ask them, what type of paper are you using? So, here's one of the big ones. I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can count, sorry. That was pretty dumb. I got eight different name brand sandpapers here. Each one of them are supposedly supposed to be the same grit, but I can tell you they're not. They really aren't. They're so different. If I grab a sheet of 400 of this, or a sheet of 400 of that, or a sheet of 400 of this, or a sheet of 400 of that, I get different results with each sheet. So there's two different styles. There's a hook and loop style. This one's got the um, hook and loop back. So it's like uh, Velcro. And this one is a pull it, uh, or stick it. It's got adhesive on the back. It sticks to the flat style. Now most of you know that there's two different styles. There's a hook it and a stick it. Um, most people are very familiar with that. Um, most other people, when I ask them what style they're using or what kind they're using, they always tell me, well, I use red or I use yellow or I use green. It's like, I don't care what color it is. I just need to know name brand so that I can compare it to what it is. So back in the days, much like there was a polisher's war, there used to be a sanding, an abrasives war. Um, I know it sounds silly, but um, the metal polishing industry is one of the only industries where it's picky because we're polishing something. When you're polishing something, the sandpaper needs to be uniform and it needs to last and it needs to not break down super fast. There's a lot of different things that need to happen when dealing with metal that don't really matter in any other industry. Wood, as long as it sands, it'll take a stain. So it doesn't need to go to be polished, so it doesn't need to run out to a 400 grit because you're gonna put a coating on top of it. So when abrasive companies were competing for places business, they wanted stuff to be aggressive. So they started doing what they called coarse grading. So this sheet of 400 and this sheet of 400 this company was a true 400, a true grading, so it was actually out at the realistic 400. But this company right here was grading it as a 400, since there's no set standard to the grading system, and was putting it out at like a 350 or a 320. So when they take this to their customer, they could say, well, ours outperforms theirs. So when they somebody would go to try something on a coarse graded sheet of 400, it was 320 or 350, they'd go and use it and they're like, whoa, that cut twice as fast as my normal 400, it's gotta be a better product. It's not the case, it's a sheet of 320 disguised as 400. Why? Because the grading system is flawed. So, if I take this, which is designed for wood, I'm not saying all red ones are designed for wood, I'm saying this specific brand is designed for wood, this one is rated at, let's just say, 320. And this one for aluminum is rated at 320. This 320 on aluminum is gonna do devastation. It's gonna create mass havoc. It's gonna do almost like what a 180 would with aluminum paper. Now, what's the real difference? The real difference is the stuff that they put on there. I use all aluminum oxide paper for my sanding uh, when sanding aluminum. Um, I do not use like the ceramics and stuff like that. The ceramics are designed to hold up better on wood. Um, there are companies out there right now saying that the ceramics work really well on aluminum. Um, I used them years back. I've tried them again here recently. I find that I have to do twice as much sanding with the ceramic sandpaper as I would with my aluminum oxide. The ceramic sandpaper is definitely more expensive and it's not intended for what I want it to do. So if I'm spending more time, time is one thing I've never been able to purchase more of. I can buy cheap sandpaper, I can buy expensive sandpaper, 
I can't buy time. If you're selling time, call me because I'm looking for it. I could use some extra time. I am running out of time, as it turns out. Everybody's one day closer to dying. I don't want to. I'm running out of time. So if you're selling time, hit me up. 920-979-0386. I'm going to buy everything you got. Um, but it better not be like a, a bridge to Hawaii or something because I know that ain't happening either. But nonetheless, back to the sandpaper issue. I can't buy time. What I can buy is I can buy paper that does the job properly. Now, if this paper is designed for wood and it takes me three times as long to polish, I would have rather spent three times as much on this sheet of paper and saved myself three times the time. Because this paper, if it cost me 50 cents versus 40 cents, 40 cents three times as long, let's say it would take me a half hour to sand it um, with this paper, or an hour and a half to sand with this paper, an hour and a half of my time is worth $150. That buys a whole ton of this, that's for sure. And I won't use nowhere near that amount of sandpaper. So I equivalent everything out by time. So figure out what your sandpaper is designed for and don't necessarily always just listen to your sales reps. I've had salesmen through my shop here a thousand times. I've had them come through and tell me, this paper is designed for aluminum and it works great. This stuff right here was designed for aluminum. It's the biggest junk I've ever seen on the planet. This stuff right here is rated for 400. I put 220 of my good stuff that I like up against it and it outperformed their 400. Their 400 was as coarse as 220 grit. So they were coarse grading their paper and it made twice as much time for me. Now, when I got something nasty to do, using wood paper on like 80 grits, awesome, because it cuts through it super fast. But understand what you're purchasing. Sometimes buying the cheapest paper you can find at your cheapest hardware stores that sell knockoff stuff isn't always the right answer. Buying cheap, cheap paper does not equivalent out to working well for you sometimes. So figure out what you're spending in time for that said paper, and especially if you're testing different papers out, definitely use a stopwatch. That was one of the best things that helped me in my earlier years was using a stopwatch. Figuring out how long stuff took me, especially if I was testing sandpapers or buffs or compounds, that kind of stuff. Um, with our new buffs and compounds, I'm finding that my compounds, I'm using a third less and I'm not sanding to 600 anymore. I'm stopping sanding at 400 and it's working out just fine. So keep track of your own stuff. The more stuff you track, the better off you're going to be in your business or if you're just doing it for yourself, for your own truck or for your own pickup or whatever. And if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to you. If time doesn't matter, have at it. I'm running a business. Everything's about time and about money because we've only got a set amount of time to work. Metal polishing is a very labor intensive business. You can't polish till you're dead. You've got to figure it out early. So I really hope this video helps because these two reds are not the same. This yellow is way different than those two reds and they're all the same grit. And not just because they're different sizes, five inch and six inch, but these papers are all supposed to be 400. And if you look close, they are definitely not. So, we'll catch you next time. Like, subscribe, comment, share to your friends. I hope this video helps. And uh, we'll see you next time. Deuces.